we're just going to have a bit of a bit of a team meeting see where we're going to but straight away straight away we're in there uh, there's pillboxes but we're just going to have a have a look in the discovery center see what that's all about good morning we're in the discovery center we've just got a bit of food and a nice warm drink we call the walk down span point which is down there off that way just gonna check out check out what's down there there's a nice fort and some pillboxes and various bits of a couple of lighthouses uh, the old lifeboat station there's plenty down there to be looking at so let's go well it was nice in there pasty and a bit of cake and a coffee but well, let's go exploring so this is what we're doing today we're up here at the minute we're going to walk all the way down here this is where you can get cut off when if the tide comes in it just washes this out now so you can end up getting stuck on this bit which is not very hospitable for overnight stops um, there's two lighthouses to look at and then the old uh, the old fort down there they used to have uh, six pounder guns so we'll go have a look see what it's all about but it's obvious it's got a um, a wartime heritage because just about wherever you look there's a pillbox so it's been heavily fortified at some point let's have a look at this one it's a bit flooded let's have a look it says please come in but we'll be exploring while he's on. Let's put this down. Have a look. Test me while he's out anyway. Quite good, Mick. I think they've used it for bird watching more recently. Have a look this way. In good condition, consider it. Right, what best part of 80 years old? Exploring Dave's just told me he's a he's a diver, and he's told me there's a submarine UC39 just in the sea over there next to that wind farm. Uh, he regularly dives it. I'll put a picture of that up. Sank in 1916, it's the first World War submarine and it was a coastal submarine for designated for mine laying. Uh, it was mining the shipping routes during the First World War and it came to grief, it was sank by HMS Ferry. So, and then uh, HMS Ferry rammed it and split its bow open and then that too sank about a mile away from the submarine. <laughs> yeah. Casualties of war. Casualties. Sad times. Well, let's get walking. We've got a three mile walk to do down over there to the jetty. On a future explore, we're going to look at getting uh, borrow Dave. Dave's got a boat, so we can borrow. We're going to borrow his boat and uh, try and get to Bull Sands Fort, which I'll put a picture up of. But for now, walking. We're out on the sand now. There's quite a strong crosswind, so apologies for the poor audio. But I've gone back to the GoPro just because it, it keeps raining. And SLR, digital SLRs don't like wet. And there's lots of wet here. Well, we've made it to the other side. We've just done that part. That's the bit that gets washed out. And we've made it back to the road. This is what the uh, Wildlife Trust are. Uh, we're putting these blocks in to uh, reinforce it all. Got one of the shelter huts here for people that do get cut off. Um, there's a HM Coast Guard, there's a radar station down here and a radio station. Um, that's manned 24 hours, so they must have accommodation down here. Got this high tide shelter. Um, 
I fucking see inside. Yeah, it's just a shelter to keep you out. It's quite warm actually. It's quite a warm structure. Is it bucket buckets will have a wee in? Yeah, buckets will have a wee in and uh, yeah, it just gets you out the wind. Because the biggest problem in a place like this is uh, wind chill factor. If it's raining and then you got anything over a four knot wind, it'll really take the temperature away. We're just walking on the road, but we can actually see where the land inland is eroding away. Just the weather's the weather's just taking it bit by bit. Uh, the concrete roads lasted for now, but eventually it does wash out. There used to be a railway down here, um, but it wasn't cut with Doctor Beach, and it was cut by the weather. The weather literally washed it away. Here we are. This is the railway line I was telling you about. They've just spotted it. But it's under this scrubland here. It's built up. And then we've got standard, I think it was a uh, four foot seven and a half inches or something like that. The actual gauge of a standard railway. So this used to have a standard railway, got all the way down. They used to have a track that looped around. Um, so yeah, all the supplies and everything used to come down by train, all the uh, military military armaments and everything was via train to the bottom. There is a taxi service down to the bottom, which is this uh, Unimog, which is a military vehicle, but not from the UK. Uh, I think the Germans use them, but we're going to walk it. It's a more railway line here as we're walking along. It's coming, off, coming across at like 30 degrees, which really shows the way Spurn Point has moved with the tide. It's like the landmass has been over there and it's over here now. Don't know what we're coming up to here, but there's a concrete structure there. Pilsudski. Yeah. Uh, and that sank just off here. And uh, it's not very deep, about 35 metres. It's really good wreck, it's fairly well intact from all uh, reports. It's been down there quite, I, can't, I don't quite remember when it sank, but it's been down there quite a few years now. So it's very tidal here, isn't it? The currents and the water, is. they're quite strong. Yeah, that's why you find that most of the wrecks inshore are all flattened and battered by the waves, so there's not a lot left. But you get further off, about 20 miles offshore, and the wrecks are fairly well intact because there's not much wave action on them. Yeah, the UC-39 is quite an amusing story. It was depth charged by the destroyer, HMS Ferry, um, and it surfaced because it had damage. Uh, when it surfaced, the crew come up on deck, manned the deck gun and started firing at the HMS Ferry. So HMS Ferry came about and rammed it, uh, and in doing so, she split her bows open. Uh, it stopped to pick up all the German survivors up out of the water and then headed inland but as it was heading to port it couldn't make way because the bows were opening up and it was taking on that much water they decided to put it astern and see if they could go in backwards. They got about a mile away from where they first struck the UC-39 and the HMS fairly sank. So quite an amusing little wartime story. That's the First World War, 1916 that happened. The tank ditch. Oh wow. That means is it to stop tanks getting in or? Yeah, they can't climb up it. So, it. so that was put in to stop tanks getting in. So it looks like it's had camo paint on it in the past. I don't know if that's just the way it's sort of degraded. Mm. Yeah, we're back on harder ground now and the railway lines have reappeared. And then this has all been pinned because of this lighthouse which is in perfect condition still, although I don't believe it's used anymore. We'll turn this corner and here we are, Spurn Point. There, just behind us, is the old lighthouse, but I believe that was an oil one, and that went out of commission a long time ago. Could have been even 1830, something like that. But I'll correct myself later. 
and then they started using that one and that in set itself is also out of out of use now but we can see here we're in a bit of a rush because we need to get in film it all and get out before the tide comes in but yeah we've got a starting to look more military now that looks military gun storage Dave's made a good point there it didn't look that far when we set off but we've come all that way from over there just in one of the old uh, military mess rooms I've uh, just been getting a drink of water but these buildings were where the men lived that were manning the guns there would have been uh, 80 people live here in these buildings a lot of them are still standing they're in fairly good condition but we'll go have a look at the forts now there's some more of the uh, fort mess quarters behind us here that's where the men lived when they were working these forts it's a lifeboat over there and then uh, run to this area this is where it starts becoming fortified see where there's been uh, little concrete pans of different buildings over the years we'll try and have a look in there Here you can see there's been like a HQ post there some steel rungs that go down inside there oh yeah to a bunker So I've got what looks like a bunker in there, inside that part. We're going to try and get round and have a look in the fort above. I've lost Dave already. So we're up on top of one of the forts now. We're just looking, trying to find a hospitable way in to the areas. Well, it looks well trampled, but there's two big uh, gun emplacements here. That we'd really like to have a look at. Got an ammo store here. Let's go have a look. That entrance is blocked off. So we're just inside what we think is a gun store, do we say, Dave? Yeah, I think this was probably the the control room because uh, there's two entrances, one that side, one that side, and they go out to what looked to be the gun pit. Um, yeah, it's been. It's like it's had a partial collapse. It's just where the weather's taking its toll on, on the buildings now, isn't it? It's like external influences. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's quite a building just in the side of the hill. Exploring Dave, just having a further look. What can we see, Dave? I can see the sea. See the sea? Can you see the shells on the sea shore? There's a, a big ship just coming in. Thank you. How are you? These old footings of buildings there. There's a HQ tower, HM Coast Guard. We're going to have a look over there. Just checking our good friend Google Maps. You see where they've had racks for things, like weapons racks perhaps. But it's this hasn't been backfilled by people, this is the weather's done it. 
Hit and miss vent. Hit and miss vent? Yeah, it's a, a vent hole that's got a sliding hatch to close it off. Yeah, we've got power in here. Communication of some sort, perhaps. Well, this is where weather's taken its toll over the years, which is filled it with sand. What do you reckon this was then, Dave? Uh, I don't know. It's, it could have been an ammo store, but it's certainly got a big enough, thick enough roof. Um, yeah, well, it's reinforced. It's a heavy gauge stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Although I think if it were an ammo store, it might have had better fortifications around the doorways to prevent blasts. Yes. Yeah. It's like random bits of railway line coming in. Yeah. As if they were used to hold something up very heavy. Maybe, uh, maybe this was where they had the big shells. Shell store, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's quite a lot of doorways, which is quite strange. There's like one, two, three, unless they were windows. Unless these were doorways, and the low ones were windows, maybe. But, let's continue exploring. Now this was still in use until 1959, when it finally demilitarised. Can't watch the brambles here because they actually trip you up. Yeah. Little RAF eggshell blue. And this would have been one of the pits for the nine and a half inch gun. And there was two of these, I believe. There's the rail it would have ran on. Sack round, looking out at the river. The ground part there. This one's more overgrown for some reason. There's a bramble trying to trip me up again. It's the hidden dangers of places like this. You trip, have a fall. And then this is why I don't like being on my own on these explores. If you've only got a trip, have a fall, bang your head. And that's the end of that.
Yeah, we're back out the other side of the fort now. There's all the old structure, the old buildings. That's what it would have looked like. They've swallowed the toilets. Are they down there? Yeah. Alright. Cool. I'll be down in the mud. So someone's put probably National Trust or the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust has put this handy walkway up so you can actually walk around the outside and have a look. But you know, quite a view. So I'm looking into the sun now, but substantial. That's where the additional watchtower would have been because it had these watchtowers on top. These structures, obviously, they're long gone, but the rest of it's here. The the footings for all the old mess buildings are all here still. But they would have been brick up to a certain height and then steel on top and the steel's just rotted away. But back down the stairs, back to exploring Dave and carry on. This is toilets 1940s style. There we are, got the old electrics in here still. That is a mains incomer. That's what that is, your main, main power from the power station comes in there, it's clamped off, and then it's split off into your live and your neutral, then off to everything else. Old fuse board. All the fuseways and your VIR cable that we've talked about before. And that is PVC from that's from the early 50s when they started developing plastics. So it's had a partial rewire at some point. I mean it's amazing how some of it, the hardwood, is still intact, it's solid. It has a rotten. But you can see on the sea air has attacked the hinges and um, the metalwork. That still works. It's just how they used to make stuff. Exploring spiders not doing so, uh, so good today. But you can still see some of the uh, paintwork of like regimental stripes. A bit of water heater or something on there. This was quite possibly, uh, well this would have been uh, urinals, see where the cisterns have been. So what do you think these piles of bricks were for then Dave? I think these were upright pillars uh, on where you stood um, and then on top of that would have been a roof. Uh, this whole piece around that would have been a corridor with a concrete roof on it and this would have been a hatch where they pass the ammunition through to the gun. They're like a miniature version of Battery Todd. Yeah. Which is in uh, in France, which is the German version of this. And it's quite surprising how the British and the Germans built the same sort of design structures. Um, I haven't done a video of Battery Todd, but my friends have, so I'll put a card of that, card to a link to that above, and you can view that. Yeah, so we think this used to have a roof on it, on this part. Yeah. Very similar to how Battery Todd is set up. And then the gun would have been here. With those Irish J's that have been chopped off there. Yeah, they cut the large parts of steel out, probably when they scrapped the gun. Because it would have been a, you know, obviously the massive gun would have been in this pit that's overgrown now. That was a 
be an ammunition pocket. Our little pockets, you can still see the uh, asbestos gasket. Little pocket for ammo. Bunker. That's where the gun would have been. And then, the, yeah, like Dave says, this would have been a corridor going round. It would have had a roof over this part, um, keeping the operatives dry and out the weather. Because in winter, this is not a hospitable place to be. Not at all. I've got another rose thorn in my boot. So that's that. One gun emplacement. Let's get down now. Do a bit more exploring round before the tide comes in. So it comes in thick and fast here. I'm thick and he's fast. <laughs> now we're just in a, one of the messing areas and someone's left all the litter. I the idiots have been. There's one of the desert rats. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's long since passed, hasn't it? So a substantial bit of wood there, but that's it from here. Onwards. Then we're back out this way, this way. Yeah, back onto that road. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then up to them brick and brick areas. No man aren't. Well they spring down but not up. Yeah. So it looks like they've just cut the girders out and let it all fall in on itself. Yeah. But there would have been one to here, one to here. Yeah. And then, like I say, I think this was brick pillars and the roof over it. Yeah. That the certainly looks like a roof section there. It does, doesn't it? That girded in it. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly does now you mention it. Yeah, because this has got little culverts underneath. What would have been the ammo pockets? Yeah, little pockets. Yeah, to put supplies and this would it would have been open yeah and then they pick the ammo out and press it through yeah and load it into the back of the gun back of the weapon and off you go now I'm not sure if they were ever actually using anger I presume they were do you know Dave? Uh, no I don't I don't know on that one It would have been a nice pretty party. I don't suppose there'd have been a lot happening. They had air raid and things. Yeah. Keeping the Akak boys going. Now, I do know to the right, Dave, we can get back round yeah. and there's some bunkers. Okay. Um, somebody, I don't know if it's the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust, are actually trying to restore one of them and dig it out. So it's filled in with sand and such like, and they're trying to restore it. But whether it'll open as, a, as an attraction or not, I'm not sure, but there's another little gun emplacement there six inch gun for a six-inch gun. This would have been substantial. But we're trying to view as much as we can in the time we've got before the tide comes in. Luckily, the weather's got better, but the tide is still—it's on its way. We've got about an hour and a half until high tide, so we need to get as much done as we can. Before that time. Time and tide wait for no man. They certainly don't. I don't know what VTS stands for, do you, Dave? Uh, isn't that the, the port pilots? Possibly. Yeah, I don't know, if I'm honest. Looks like some sort of bed over there. Yeah, I bet there's all sorts in these brambles here. Oh yeah. Just hidden away. I think it's just to the other side of there. 
We want to be. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear it, but we can actually hear the uh, radar aerial rotating. A little drive motor. Now I'll never get a day off. So uh, what we used to call watch on, stop on in the forces. Turn it on until it until it breaks. <laughs> Which hopefully won't be for a very long time. You can see all the weather's took its toll on that. Just breaking apart bit by bit. But we want to be where Dave's walking and then just to the other side. Yeah. I think we're actually above it now. There it is. On there. Yeah. Left. Left. Just looking for some, uh, there's some bunkers around here. Very close by. We'll just have a look for it. Uh, here we are. This is the one that uh, my friends have been to. This is new. This last time was closed off like that. But they've opened it up now. Let's go have a look. See all the cabling that's been pulled in. That'll be from the 50s. So that's uh, steel wire armoured cable. Something under there. The concrete pad. These were all sealed off. So I believe we must be nearer the. Now this. This is for a searchlight. This is this looks like a searchlight. Um, again, I'll put a card in the card at the top. This looks like a searchlight, like on the Dover Cliffs. And then these would lit up the lit up the aircraft for the guns to fire at. Do you agree, Dave? The roof is Cause thick. They used to have big doors that could shut because they used to. The lights weren't electric, they used to, I can't remember what they did, it was either burn magnesium, what, can oh, you remember? Was it an arc? It was like, yeah, you couldn't yeah. just turn it on or off. No. So when they didn't need the light, they used to shut big doors uh, across the light, so the aircraft couldn't see the position, because then they attacked the light to take the light out. But if you shut the doors, then it engulfs the pilots back in the darkness, and then they can't see the light, and then... You have a watch, yeah. Open them back up. Highlight the highlight the aircraft up in the air again, and fire at it. But yeah, that's that's very possibly what that was. Uh, that's just recently been opened up again by someone very helpful. Yeah, and there's a little watch's look where they used to watch through there. And that's what that was. Just running away, but somebody very kindly, very nicely, has opened that back up. Literally a year ago, that entrance we'd just been in was just full of rubble. You couldn't enter it and it was all there, uh, that cordoned off. Right. So we've got 60 minutes yep. till we need to be at the position. Now this looks in a bit of a sorry state. Uh, what do you think this would have been, Dave? Mm. It's got like an extra roof on it, which is... I haven't seen that before, have you? Oh, second, second like a roof. secondary roof. Mm. Yeah. Let me pack off. Let's have a look in here. It's like a machine gun post. Oh, okay. So what they would have done, they would have had the machine gunners in here, pointing out that way, 
and then they would have been out here and there would have been a mud bank just just low enough so they could fire over it but it would have prevented people firing back at them and that's what that would have been used for machine gun post and obviously this is all later this is after the war these concrete pads and all that that's their garage garage little uh, buggy and the radar aerials up there now we're at the back of the messing quarters again uh, apparently that that was the sergeant's mess there and that's the building that we were in earlier 